Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle, and I am doing a presentation on bone histology. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy the video. Now, the agenda of this video is to go into full detail on bone histology and basically how the bones make up the body. Um, so first, I'll start with the introduction. Um, what is bone histology, right? It's the discovery and just a description of the, the setup of the bones and what they consist of. I will first start off with the cellular and extracurricular components, and then I'll move on through this presentation. So stick along. So we asked, what are the major components of a bone? But before I start there, I wanna start by just discussing how important bones are in the body. It's a very important structure in the body. It builds up and it also serves as protection. Just imagine our bodies without bones. We will be walking around looking like spaghetti limbs. Um, that would be pretty funny though, but it wouldn't be pretty beneficial to us. So back to major components of the bone. There are two major components of the bone, one being cellular and one being extracellular. The cellular portion or component of bone, shall we say, is the bone that is composed of four different cell types consisting of one osteoblast, osteocytes, osteoclast, and the bone lining cells. The extracellular, on the other hand, is a dynamic three-dimensional network of micro lab molecules that provide structural support for the cells and tissues. The main components here are the fibrous elements consisting of collagen, elastic, elastin, so on. They also consist of linked proteins, which consist of fibronectin and laminin, as well as space-filling molecules, for example, protoglycans and glycans. Now, to go into further detail a little bit on the major components of a bone, with cellular, when it comes to cellular and intracellular components of a bone, it consists of tissue and cartilage. Bone tissue is the compromised various cell types, the extracellular components that collaborate to maintain the integrity and strength of our bones. So it's the reason why our bones are so strong, right? Um, it also, with, when it comes to osteogenic cells, it is situated in inner layers, um, including the periosteum and the endosteum, which possess the ability to differentiate into osteoblasts. These osteoblasts are pivotal in generating the bone matrix, which consists of collagen fibers and hydropatinine mineral deposits. Upon encapsulation within the matrix, osteoblasts transform into osteocytes, which is vital for regulating mineral equilibrium and supporting overall bone health. On the other hand, you also have the osteoclasts, which are the large multinucleated cells that undertake the vital role of bone resorption, which effectively breaks down bone tissue to release minerals into the bloodstream. And then I wanna to touch on cartilage, which is the resilient and flexible connective tissue that features chondroblasts and chondrocytes. Chondroblasts are tasked with producing the extracellular matrix. Okay, which is very important. They composed of collagen and protoglycans, which imparting the cartilage with strength and elasticity. As chondroblasts mature and become encased in leucane, they mature into chondrocytes, maintaining the structural integrity of cartilage matrix. So as you see on this slide, um, this is just a picture of the diagram of the bone, uh, whereas you can see parts of the periosteum and the endoiceum in this part, but we're not going to touch too much on that for this presentation. But I just wanted to show you what compact bone looks like versus the sponge bone. So 
so here in this part of the presentation is a picture of compact bone. On the left-hand side, you can see the top portion is considered the compact bone, which protects the spongy, or should we say softer part of the bone. Um, and here I'll touch on just different parts of this object, which is also considered the compact bone, right? So you have four main components in this, this presentation, well, this slide rather, where you have osteocytes, osteoblasts, osteogenic cells, and osteoclasts. So in this, these are the four major components of the bone, which makes the structure what it is, right? So when it comes to osteocytes, they actively are involved in maintaining bone health, right? Then you have osteoblasts, which are responsible for synthesizing new bone tissues by depositing the bone matrix into the osteoblasts, and they play a very pivotal role in the bone growth and repair. And we usually, where this comes into handy can also come in handy when you break a bone, right? Your osteoblasts are responsible for repairing what you broke. That's how your fractures heal and how breaks end up healing as well. So then we touch on osteoclasts, right? The, which is the central bone resorption. They break down existing bone tissue, allowing for mineral release and dynamic bone dyna density adjustment. So I would say when you hurt yourself or you get injured, that the osteoclast would be play a pivotal role in that um, as far as removing um, the added bone tissue that you may have that don't need to be in your body. They are in charge of that removal. And then you have the osteogenic cell. These are osteogenic cells. They are undifferentiated with the high mitotic activity where they are the only bone cells that can divide. Isn't that interesting? Um, so you will find these close to the bone matrix when your bone is consistently reprogramming and recreating new bone near those growth plates. So I just wanna move, move along to the next slide so we can go into further detail on the bone itself. So here a picture a uh, here picture is the compact bone. As you see on the left hand side that's considered a long bone which you would find in your limbs, which are your legs and arms. Um and the top portion consists of the sponge bone. And I just wanted to touch a little bit more on this in the next slide. So here is a picture of an osteon. And what is an osteon? It's considered a basic functional unit of the compact bone, which is also called the hyversium system. And osteon serves as being very important in the system where the osteon con constitutes the fundamental building block of compact bone, which also consists of several integral components. And we'll touch on this in a later slide. So here you see pictured is spongy bone, which if you look took a look at it and the need for microscope, you would say that it actually looks like your household sponge comes with a bunch of holes in it, um, which is good for absorption, right? Um, just like a household sponge, the sponge bone is also a, in a use of being like an absorber. It absorbs shock, meaning, you know, when you jump up and down, it absorbs that cushion when your bones come down on each other, um, which is a very good, which is very beneficial to us. So what is part of a sponge bone, right? Well, you have the central canal. Um, where it houses blood vessels, which are important to nutri nutrition for the bones. Um, and it also cons cons consists of nerves. It's a cylindrical channel that provides the essential nutrients and facilitates communication to our osteocytes. So that brings us back to our previous slide when I showed you um, the picture of the compact bone. 
Um, you also have the lamellae, which is arranged in a centric of rings, kind of like circles, which is that serves as that sponge shape um, that I was discussing previously. Um, and this is composed of collagen fibers, which contribute to the bone strength and structural stability. Then you have leucani which are small cavities within the matrix that are inhabited by osteocytes, which oversee bone health and mineral, mineral regulation. Now, going back to our osteocyte, osteo, if you were to break down, means bone. Site means cell. So you already know that those are considered bone cells. Then you have the canaliculi, which shows a microscopic channels extending from leucani enabling communication between the osteocytes. And they also facilitate an exchange of nutrients and ensuring the sustenance of bone. Um, so in, in all, all as a whole integral, the bone itself and the bone system that makes up bone work together to keep our bones healthy and to replenish our bones when they break down. And I just wanted to touch back on this picture of the compact bone. As you see below here where, where the central canal is, this is the housing of blood vessels and nerves. This cylindrical channel provides essential nutrients and facilitates communication to the osteocytes as discussed, right? So these here are what you call the central canal. Then as you look through here, you have the liminali, which are these lines here, this, this part of the cell, of the bone, which are the rings. As you see here, these are all consisted of lemmili, the circular rings composed of collagen fibers that I was talking about, which contributes to the bone strength. And then in between here, you have small cav those small, small cavities, which are considered the leucani. And then you have small microscopic channels, which you can't really see here. But in this area here is where you would find the coniculocali. So here we have our next slide where we can compare and contrast our compact bone with our spongy bone. So what do they have in common? Well, they both are used for support. They both are considered bones, which is obvious, right? <laughs> um, but they also are integral in protecting the, in our internal organs as well. And they both consist of osteoblasts, which you see present, and then also osteoclasts that are also present. And when it comes to compact bone, what sets it aside from sponge bone is that it is dense, it is also strong. It includes a herversium system. It also contains yellow bone marrow and it is located close to the surface, which is where you would wanna have that hard bone for the added protection. And as we move over to the sponge bone, what sets it aside from compact bone is that the open spaces, right? The sponge-like open spaces. Um, it also absorbs and shifts with weight distribution. It also contains what we call trabeculi, and this portion also contains red bone marrow. Now, when it comes to comparing and contrasting these things, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. So when it comes to compact bone, which is also known as the dense bone, um, it forms the outer protective layer, as I stated. And with its robust composition, it lends support and defense to the bones. It is also characterized by the tightly packed osteons that are included in the compact bone's fundamental units as it plays the host to the central canal, which is also known as the Herversian canal, enveloping the blood vessels and nerves, which it also encodes and protects that as well. And with this intricate arrangement, it facilitates efficient nutrient and waste exchange. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to sponge bone, this is situated within the inner region of the bones, which also sets it aside. 
Um, it is enveloped by the compact bone um, and it is referred to the calcaneus bone, which as I spoke to about a, already, it features the trabecule, which is the meshwork of interconnected struts. So that's the definition of a trabeculi. Um, but in all in all, it also serves as support for bone marrow and it enables me metabolic exchange. The sponge bone also plays an integral role in an internal structure of the bone. So for a moment, I just wanted to go back to osteocytes and osteoblasts and osteoclasts, right? And just go a little bit into depth on the functions of these osteocytes and osteoblasts and the remodeling process. So when it comes to the osteocytes, they serve as the mechanism for stress sensors and stress sensors. The osteocytes also contribute to the bone integrity and orchestrate re remodeling. Um, osteoblasts are also crucial for bone formation and repair, and they deposit the new bone matrix during remodeling. The osteoclasts, as we spoke to already, breaks down the damaged tissue, facilitating new bone formation. Now, when it comes to the activation, osteoclasts are activated. When they're activated, the initialing bone reabsorption and they create a cavity. When it comes to resorption, the osteoclasts break down bone tissue, releasing minerals into the bloodstream. And the reverse of that, osteoblasts commence depositing new bone marrow on surfaces resulting from resorption. Now, when it comes to the formation of osteoblasts, they deposit collagen and minerals shaping new bone tissue. Now, while as osteoblasts mature into osteocytes, they are embedded within a newly formed bone matrix, and the bone matrix. When it comes to imbalance in the remodeling, among bone cells during remodeling can give rise to various bone disorders. For instance, if there are ever excessive osteoclast activity and it remains unbalanced by, by osteoblasts, the response may lead to bone weakening and conditions like osteoporosis, as you see in like older adults most times, but it can also occur in anybody at any age, um, depending on body structure. And as we reach almost to the end of the presentation, I just wanted to touch back on the compact bone, right? Because it is a really strong part of the body and integral where it can withstand compressive force. So, you know, when you are interested in sports and you play and you would think that someone got injured, well, good luck there. Thanks to compact bone, it absorbs most of that activity most of the time, um, which stops a lot of breaks and a lot of injuries from occurring. Um, and I just wanted to lastly touch on the histology and why bones are so important. When it comes to the difference of compact bone and sponge bone, they are best explored by the histology, which is a good point in doing this presentation is to show you how integral each part is while separate, but also how they work and interchange and work together to comp to keep the body um, going and keep up the protection of our internal organs. Although they are different, one thing I can say is important is that most of our body and most bones contain both compact and sponge bone tissues, but the distribution and concentration vary based on the bone's overall function. And on that note, I have come to the end of my presentation and I wanted to conclude. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned um, more than what you felt like you know in this semester and class. And hopefully I gave you a new outlook on how important the bone system is to our human health and have a great day.